All right, so I think we're live. Maybe somebody in the chat can uh, can let us know for sure. Make sure you uh, you hear us. Um, so anyway, we're uh, we're going to give it a go. Hopefully, somebody can let us know in the chat if they can hear us. And with that, we will get started. So welcome everyone. We're going to have a little play test, not a play test per se, but uh, live Dragon Slayer session. And I'm looking forward to uh, everyone in the chat. I'm looking forward to playing with this group of uh, stalwart adventurers ready to go out on their first TPK, I mean, fun adventure. And uh, we'll, I look forward to matching wits against this uh, group of, of savvy veterans and newbies. So there we are. So with it, we're going to get right to the adventure because that's what everyone wants to see. No horsing around here. So uh, if you don't know me, my name is Greg Gillespie. Uh, we're playing uh, my home game, Dragon Slayer, which is coming out very shortly in a couple of weeks. We've got a, a great group of adventures here. Everyone's going to say a word or two about their character. And then we're going to get right to the adventure. So um, Brandywine Furryfoot, could you give us a few words, please, about your character and introduce yourself to the group? Hello, everybody. I'm Brandywine Furryfoot from uh, the Northumberland Furryfoot. My father was a food and ale merchant, and I decided I was not going to take that path. I was uh, made too many mess-ups and was sent out on my butt to go claim my place in the world, so I decided with dagger and sling in hand, I would go do just that. Uh, working for a local thieves guild, I uh, run into a, who became my best mate, uh, Magnus. A uh, rather large, intimidating gentleman. I think together he and I can take over the world quite nicely. I'm a puckish rogue who's uh, just looking oh. to get uh, his place of the world and establish maybe a new thieves guild with my mate and uh, have some fun doing it. Awesome. That's terrific. How about Magnus? It makes sense that you'd go after your best friend, Brandywine. All right, I'm Magnus, and I'm a Cyclops man. Um, I'm a big fighter. I'm six foot seven. Um, I've come into this world of adventuring um, because Brandywine has introduced me to this new concept called fun. The Cyclops people are tend to be very serious and dour, and Brandywine, when we first met, um, introduced me to this new concept. So I'm going to try to break out of the serious role and get more into my fun self as I progress well, through the campaign. As the Cyclopsman, we've got our eye on you. <laughs> Absolutely. Brother Landon. Brother Landon the Pious. I may be young, but I am a devout cleric of St. Yig. One day I hope to get into the Order of the Crimson Cross, but considering I was lowborn and not really of that stature, it's a long road ahead of me, but I know there's evils out in the world and I am here to vanquish them. Rock on. Uh, Ashton. Ashton Blackmore here. Human Ranger. A day in the woods is better than a day in the city. And where my arrow finds your home might be through your heart. Very good. Uh, Fafnir. Fafnir Stonekind here. I am a dwarf of uh, following the god Thandur. I have been granted a blessed by this God to prove myself in battle and inspire my dwarven brethren with the power of the stone beard. I've also been tasked to bring back mighty precious gems to honor my clan. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Chadwick. Yeah, Chadwick's a uh, human fighter. Um, he didn't want to follow his family's uh, farming uh uh, business, so he just works at the local tavern, spends most of his money drinking in the tavern, and most nights you'll find him either at the tavern or recovering behind the tavern. He's looking to uh, make some more money to continue his days at the tavern. Very good. So I've got everybody at this stage. All right, so there we have one additional um, uh, retainer, a man at arms, and guide. His name is Old Bill, so I'll be I'll be playing old Bill. And when I say he's old, I mean he's very old, like old AF old. So here we go. You've all come to the town of Helix because you've heard that there are grave goods to be had in this uh, in this sort of like complex of barrel mounds deep in the swamp. And 
one night at the brazen strumpet before you sort of head off there's like a kind of like a gold rush feeling in the uh, spring so things sort of dry up and the ground becomes a little bit more solid and, and people it makes it a little bit easier to get to the barrel mounds and in the brazen strumpet um brandywine furry foot has his ear to the ground low to the ground sorry short joke <laughs> and you manage to hear over here somebody talk about um an unplundered crypt and it's actually hidden inside a crypt that has been plundered but this is like a secret entrance that nobody knows about and what you've decided to do you've sort of communicated this to the group and you decided to uh to try to get there before the the adventures that we're uh, talking about in the tavern so the early the next morning you set off and you you head south through the mist covered trail old bill kind of leads you along and then you uh you emerge to this open portion of of the uh swamp and there's like layers of mist and fog and you can see sort of the tops of some barrel mounds in front of you and then the, the mist and the fog shifts again those ones disappear and then other ones appear so you can see there's like a field of um, of barrows in front of you and uh, old bill who um has been and guided adventurers to the uh, two barrow maze before uh suggests that you move towards the central mound and uh he's got an idea where this plundered mound might be located so you move a little bit farther into the mounds and you see the large central mound that has standing stones dotted dotted around it from there, you divert to the east just slightly, and you you approach this mound. It's about maybe uh, 40 feet by 40 feet across, maybe 20 feet high, and you can see the entrance has been indeed plundered. There was a cover stone that has been broken uh, long ago, cracked in half, and is laying in pieces in the ground in front of the entrance. So it's at this stage that... Uh, old Bill uh, sort of like points towards the entrance and he said, that's the one you're looking for. Well, I wouldn't uh, question old Bill's expertise. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. So we see before us uh, an opened barrow that seems to descend into the darkness. Yeah, so there's two, two uh, side stones and then a top stone and, uh, and it's a uh, dark on the uh, the inside of the mound and the uh, the grass is uh, sort of like quite high uh, halfway up your up your leg and wet and uh, there's you're leaving lots of uh, prints around there's lots of like um, moist ground your feet gets can get stuck in it it's uh, just on the early side of spring relative to adventuring in the mounds any uh, any the animal trucks around the one that's unplundered bill like, uh, if the stone has been removed, and he says that's the one that hasn't been found yet, why is the stone moved? I think there was one inside, an internal chamber or something of that sort that has not yet been plundered, is what I remember. That's what mm -hmm. I heard. All right. They, they were talking, the adventurers were talking, they were coming here earlier, we beat them before. They and, got here, and they said that there was, inside, there was another chamber that we okay, could plunder. Well, if we're going to tap a new keg tonight, we should go down there and find that treasure. Indeed. Yeah. I'm going to spark up a uh, torch and... Uh, oh, I'll hold the torch. And... <clears throat> hold the torch. Okay, and again, there's lots of fog and mist around you. You can see maybe 20 feet away, and that's, that's about all that you've got relative to uh, vision. Uh, Ashton, did you ask about uh, any tracks near the mound of... Yeah. Uh... Any fresh f footprints, <laughs> animal tracks coming in and out of this uh, barrel maze? You do see, um, you do see some tracks. Um, it's pretty because of the, the soft ground. Um, you see some booted footprints, not all that recent. And then there's another set that has like one boot and a clawed foot, and then hmm. one boot and a clawed foot, going moving away from the mound. Magnus is going to grab Brandywine, and his Cyclops tones tell him, "You check traps." <clears throat> Right, you are, big man. Eloquent as always. Let's get down there. I say we go All in right. marching order and head on down. 
Wonderful. Quick okay. prayer up to the sky before darkness envelops. <laughs> as he prays to the sky, I look up as like one of these. <laughs> All right. All right. So you uh, you approach the front of the mound, and uh, just and, and with uh, Chadwick's torch, uh, as he pokes around a little bit, you know you can't see to the back of the mound, but you can see that there's a uh, sarcophagus, a broken, partially broken sarcophagus in the center of this. Uh, of the sparrow mound, but you can't see the back of the mound given you're standing at the entrance. I'll uh, draw my sword and be at the ready and slowly move into the mound to get a better look. All right. So you can see uh, now that you've entered the mound a little bit that there's uh, the uh, there was a like a, a, a stone floor, flagstone floor that was put down, but it's like. Uh, Wood's mud has washed in and then washed out again many many different times so it's a little bit slick and uh, there are pools of, of, of water and mud um, now that you're sort of like inside the barrel uh, you can see just to the back this sarcophagus is in the center and uh, it looks like at some point in the past the uh, cover stone for the sarcophagus has been broken with uh, perhaps iron spikes or a sledgehammer or something like that Half of it, um, it's broken in half, and like the top, the the upper portion has been shoved off of it. The bottom portion is still sort of resting, partially broken. That's what you can see from where you're standing now. Any markings that stand out? Not from not from where you are. And again, you're only a couple feet inside the uh, inside the mound. Okay, I'll draw my sword and I'll move in ten feet. Okay. Uh, you move in, you can see that uh, whoever plundered this tomb was kind of in a hurry. There's a few bones littered uh, on the floor, part of a burial shroud, and uh, some stone rubble. And uh, you can see there's another uh, tent, like there's another, say, five feet, five or seven feet beyond the back of the sarcophagus to the, um, the back wall of the barrow mound. So it, if there was a, a hidden entrance, it would likely be the sarco under the sarcophagus, more than likely the back, though, uh, uh, hmm. near the edge that you were sort of indicating. So, so I guess I'll start go, go to the back, and I'll start fondling the wall, seeing if there's uh, any sort of lever to pull or button to push or item to move aside. Magnus checks secret doors. Uh -huh. Fafner stands at the entrance <laughs> looking back to make sure nothing comes behind us. Chadwick will do the same thing to guard our rear. Okay, so um, Brandywine, you go to the uh, move to the back of the crypt and you're looking at the wall. You don't see anything unusual about the wall. Magnus, where exactly are you looking? Um, I'm looking around the crypt. Um, Brandywine had indicated that uh, he thought maybe there would be a, a door or something maybe under the crypt. I'm going to start there. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking for around the crypt to make sure that there's no signs of movement or shifting stones that might indicate that... Or shifting bones. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> no Indeed. shifting stones or shifting bones. So you've checked at the back wall, and you don't see anything unusual there. All right. If I check around the crypt and I don't see anything, I'm going to work kind of work the wall. Cyclops okay. men have a... Uh, Ability to apparently detect secret doors on a on a roll of one to two, so yeah, you don't uh, you use ten minutes, so you don't see anything. What's everyone else doing? Well, this is going on. I would like to uh, strike up a torch. Just better to have a little extra light. Okay. Um, so I've checked the back. Hey, big man, give me a hand with this uh, sarcophagus. Let's start looking underneath here. Maybe it moves or kajiggers in some fashion. I lift. <laughs> I sit right. back and observe, white hatting the, all the way. As you look at the back of the sarcophagus, you can see um, a stone. Um, there are three, as part of the sarcophagus, etched in stone, are three crescent moons um, on top of each other that are jutting from the back of the sarcophagus. What do you make of them, big man? Pushable? Turnable? Looks like ancient sorcery to me. 
If only we had a mage. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't. I, uh, uh, I touched the first one. Does it depress? It does not. Faulkner plods down between them and looking, trying to use his stone sense as he reaches a hand out and feels. So you're feeling something in the dark. Is that true? Well, I think the dwarf can see in the light, is it? Can he not? Or see in the dark? Not when there's torches at the same time. So it ruins your dark vision. So you need to be on your own in the dark to use your dark vision. Touch the third one. Um, the third one doesn't do anything. I mean, as uh, Fafnir sort of checks things out, he does see, now that he looks closely, some gro um, groove marks at the on the front end of the sarcophagus that point towards the opening of the burial mound. So what do you think? Push the sarcophagus towards the burial mound? I uh, push. There's definitely going to be a trap. So, uh, those three th those three moons are going to bite us in the ass somehow, but let's see what goes. <laughs> uh, Magnus pushes. <laughs> All right, so um, Magnus pushes on the uh, back end of the sarcophagus, and he feels just a tiny little bit of movement, but it locks into place, and he can't he can't push it. Tavok's going to go uh, give him a hand to see if their combined effort can move it. Okay, um, two of you attempt to move it, and it's not moving. So what if we decide the? What if we go around the other side and try to push it the other way? Doesn't look like it would do that, given the groove marks. I chime so, in with uh, perhaps the walls surrounding the entrance. You don't see anything unusual about the, the walls. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. fill with these moons. Oh. I do. Uh, that sounds like a random check. Yeah. As you uh, are all bugging, buggering around with the uh, sarcophagus, you hear movement at the front of the burial mound. Um, Brandywine, roll a d6 to see if you're surprised. Well, we got a two on that. Okay, uh, you are surprised. Um, so two mangy-looking corpses shuffle into the burial mound. And uh, attack the uh, backmost characters. So I'm going to assume that's Brother Landon, and I'm going to pick Chadwick. Um, Love it. <laughs> one will attack uh, Landon. That's an eight. That's a, a miss. The other one will attack Chadwick, and that's a nine, and that's a miss. So what I do is I roll target 20. So I make my roll. I add the monster's hit dice, and then I'll add your armor class. And if that hits 20 or higher, it's a successful hit. So I'll ask you your armor class from time to time. All right, so that was their uh, surprise round. So now it's going to be a new initiative. So it's a D6 for the group. Uh, who would like to begin rolling for the group? Magnus roll. Magnus. <laughs> I've got a two. I'll beat the two. Three. No. You know, know. Okay, so uh, land in the. We're gonna uh, do reverse order because basically, you know, um, we've got Brooke, Chadwick and and Landon can attack first. So go ahead. Wonderful. Okay, Landon, go ahead. You go. All right. So I have a flail on me. Let's let's do something. I'm probably not hitting much with a uh, got a nine, so I'm hitting armor class eleven. <clears throat> Um, or wait, yeah, uh, you need a 13. Oh, okay. Chadwick, you're up. Okay, so um, I already had my short sword and shield out, so I'm just going to take a swing out of my broadsword. Yep. And a 14 with plus 2, so 17 or 15, 16. That's a hit. Okay, I got d6. So that's four or five points of damage. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, it it uh, falls to the ground. Oh, he won't be drinking anything tonight, boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nor ever again. <laughs> Don't want to eat that. 
No. All right. Um, so then um, it's, again, a relatively confined space. So uh, I'll pick uh, one more. So let's go with um, Ashton. What do you got? You want to attack one of these um, creepy zombie monsters? You're muted. Sorry. No worries. Uh, 18. Okay. Yeah. So um, just give me, like, for the benefit of everybody at home, uh, give you say I'm going to attack the whatever with my broadsword so that everyone knows. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay. D6 for damage. Add your strength. Uh, five total. Five? Okay. It takes some damage. Still kicking. And uh, that's going to conclude uh, that round. So it's a new initiative. Got a five. Who's wrong? Save us, Magnus. Get the six. Big sixes. <laughs> Four. All right. So the uh, the creepy undead creature comes in with a 17, and that will be on Landon. What, that, ah. That's going to hit you, Landon. Yeah. And uh, it rolls a four for damage. Oh. I am half out. I'm trying to hold myself together. <laughs> All right. So, Chadwick, you can attack the one beside Landon and then Ashton. Okay. Uh, five. Not going to do it. All right. Landon? 18. That's a hit. Six points of damage. All right, six points of damage. All right, so that uh, that second undead creature uh, gets sort of gets its arm chopped off, and then it falls to its knees, and then lands face first on the floor. So um, you know, Landon and uh, and Fafnir have sort of like been trained in their clerical training to understand undead and how they work. But this is pretty freaky for the rest of you because you've never you've heard stories about undead creatures, but you've never actually encountered one before. So. Uh, so it's a pretty frightening experience to um, to uh, meet the face of the dead, and uh, you know just to put that in context of, uh, of first level characters. Yeah. So uh, these these two corpses are laying on the floor of the burial mound. What were they armed with? Just their claws. And they're wearing, I guess, not like rags. I don't know. Um, bits of rag, but you haven't really looked. So, uh, Brandywine's like, screw this. Let's get this thing opened. Um, we, I don't know if they'll come back. I don't know if they're dead, dead. I don't know if they're undead. I don't know what's happening with these things. Uh, I'm going to take a look at those, those three moon dots again, Greg. Yeah. Um, do they, can they move to press in any way? Uh, can I pull them out, push them in? Well, you push the first one and the third one so okay. far. I'll push the second one. Okay. You hear a click and the grinding of stone on stone as the sarcophagus moves towards the entrance and reveals a steep staircase descending down into the darkness. This is probably I I grab I, I have a silver medallion that I hold and I, I, I just look up the sky and thank Fortuna uh for this. All right. Now we're in it. Check bodies. They clearly don't have anything on them, big man. They're not even delicious for soup bones anymore. Chadwick will, uh, he's going to check the bodies, see if they have anything of value on them. Okay. You take some time to check the bodies. And um, on the first one, it has a, a pouch at its hip. I'm going to uh, take the pouch and have a look inside. All right. There are um, three amethysts worth 25 gold pieces each. Oh, 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 looks like we're tapping that cake tonight. Well, <laughs> you've taught me a new lesson, Magnus. Good job. Time to go back home and drink. Yeah, yeah we're done. We got the gems. <laughs> Mom now we got some great gems. We're good. Now <laughs> we have the cream. Head. Now we have the cream. <laughs> okay, and uh, the second one has a, a Sayax knife tied in a... In a Shabby scabbard tied to its uh, belt. Oh. 
Well, if no one's claiming that uh, very fine dagger, I would like to be able to toss out at a few heads. Mm -hmm. By all means, take it. I wouldn't dare touch such a decrepit thing. <laughs> all right. So, do you want to uh, peer down into the deep, dank darkness? Yeah, thrust a Chadwick, you want to thrust a torch down there and we'll get the sure. fire started? So, uh, says there's more treasures lie below. Uh, uh, there's probably more treasure or more of whatever came in this doorway. <clears throat> but I will get my sword and shield ready and I will slowly descend into the darkness. All right, the staircase is very steep, um, steeper than most. Uh, and the stairs are narrow. And so it extends downward about 20 feet. And you can see, hopefully you can see that okay. We're going to bring it forward a bit. Uh, this is what you can see from the stairwell. And you can see a wall at the back. I guess the stairs are like coated in layers of mud and grime from the flooding in and out of the, this area. Yeah, you can see that um, there is some... Um, like dark peat colored um, water oozing in between the uh, flagstones. Is there any uh, footprints on the uh, on the surfaces leading down? You see no no footprints. This uh, this has not been disturbed for uh, a long time. I'll slowly continue down to uh, where it flattens out and take a look to the right. How uh, steep was the stairway again? Um. So. Uh, half the size of a regular staircase and the, the okay. stairs are more narrow and they're wet. Ooh, that might be hazardous, at least slippery, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. All right, so the you can see... Area uh, damp, or is this leaking water coming <clears throat> from a certain area? Leaking water, yeah. Pardon but me. it didn't come from above where we were. No, the whole, the whole um, area is boggy, so that's what you would assume the water's coming from. Okay, got it. Yeah, swamp area. Yeah. Water so, everywhere. As uh, Chadwick looks with his torch, this is what he can see looking to the north. Okay, then um, continue, I guess, uh, cautiously. All right. Yeah, look up and down, see if there's like sudden, anything hanging off the ceiling above us here. We're in this, uh, who knows what's down here, but I don't want to get. Do any of you have a ten foot pole? All right, Chadwick, you fall in a pit. Oh, <laughs> I knew it was coming. All right, you got it. Out. <laughs> and you take six oh, points of damage. Oh, oh no! <laughs> uh, I, I was I was just about to tell you I have a pole. Yeah. Not that it's you, you still alive. Still right down there. <laughs> I'm not quite dead yet. <laughs> yeah. You're very yeah. badly wounded. I am very badly wounded. Um, I, th I have, uh, 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 I have some rope, a 20 foot rope and a grappling hook. Um, could I, I I'll use the rope and, and to put it down. Do you think you can climb out of there? I think I'd be able to climb up, but I want to take a look down here first. What <clears throat> am I looking at when I look across the floor? Uh, you're in a 10 foot pit. Um, there's a little bit of water on the bottom and, uh, the, and the walls are slick, just like the walls along the staircase. Mm -hmm. If I uh, shuffle my feet in the water, do I search around? Do I find anything in the under the water? Other than a little bit of your blood, no. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, grab the rope and uh, attempt to climb back out of here. Uh, Magnus, could you uh, give me a bit of hand on this? Me help. <laughs> you can put it around him. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll wrap the the, ro the rope around me and help him out. All right. Uh, very well. You've got enough weight that, uh, that he can climb back up. You do notice that right along on the uh, eastern side, there's a little bit of a ledge right here. So this pit is effectively 10 feet by 9 feet, and there's a little ledge right here. Greg, for uh, gaming purposes, so the hallway is basically 10 foot wide? That's correct. Each okay, square so is 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet. Okay. 
So I'll keep leading the way, but I can't take another fall like that in one of these pits. So you with the ten foot pole, press that ledge um, on the side and make sure it holds your weights before you try to go over. Yeah, I don't have a ten foot pole, so does anybody? I do. Magnus does. There we go. Magnus does. Yeah. Magnus I'll, takes the takes the pole and whacks along that that ledge. I'll change spots with uh, Chadwick. How bad is he hurt? Who's who's that? Sorry. Oh, yeah, four eight points. Out. Ashton Ashton will take a uh, take the lead. Very well. Greg, did you catch the part about the I'll use the ten foot pole to check the stability of that ledge, so I'll whack it like it going down as far as I can. Seems stable. Okay. Uh who do we have in the front now? Ashton and uh who's beside Ashton for purposes? <clears throat> Chadwick's moving to the back. <clears throat> So the Got ledge probably that. requires our character with dexterity to work the ledge first. Yeah, are we safe, able to safely navigate that ledge, or do we need to tie? Well, that sounds like a job for me. Off for each other, and so we can get across without any bales falling. Is there any handholds on the ledge, or is it just the ledge? Just the ledge. I say we tie a rope off to each I, other. So at least tie it off. Magnus can hold a rope, and then I'll go over with the other end. As long as I don't slip and die, then uh, you know, it should be fine. <laughs> Little man, no die. That's the big. That's the general idea. Magnus, throw him over. <laughs> Tossing the lead head special occasions. Uh, I I grab the other end of the rope and then uh, I I sort of cautiously I, I kind of check the slickness and then I I'll, I'll crab walk across. Um, I'm gonna hold. What's you back a crab for walk? A second. Side sideways crab walk. I'm gonna <laughs> Magnus like, reaches Naruto around or Yeah. Magnus reaches up and stops you, uh Brandywine. And I'm gonna use the pole to hold you against the wall as you go. All right. Uh, clever. All right, so Brandywine make a dexterity check. Good roll, good roll, good roll. We got a six. All right. So if you're under your dexterity, you're good. All right, oh, so you well, managed to yeah. you managed to shuffle across with your nimble feet. Um, would the plus two come into effect with that, Greg, to modify the roll? Um, it doesn't matter because you were successful. Right. Oh, I just I just questioning the mechanic. Yeah. So effectively, uh, whatever your dexterity, as long as you were under your dexterity, you're good. But would would your plus two to hit become like a negative two in that purpose or no? No, no. Okay. Just, no. It's just your roll. Okay. Um, so I'll be there, my meager strength, holding the rope uh, taut as uh, the rest hopefully come across. All right, well, off you're only... his holy symbol out and says, come here, Chadwick. And he <laughs> holds his hand out and casts Cure Light Wounds on him. Oh, uh-huh. well, you. before going across. Yep. You're a better man than I. <laughs> so two things. Uh, Brandywine, you're only about 30 or 40 pounds. So yeah. you can't effectively hold a rope for I, weight. I can hold it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's more uh, uh, decorative at this point. <laughs> right. You'll get pulled down like, the, like a balloon or something. Oh, yeah. I definitely will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a halfling balloon. Exactly. Just How many um, hit points did I recover from the spell? Oh, a roll I want to hear actually plus like plus a one. good... I want to hear a good spell... Uh, so three? Incantation? In no, it was a total of nine because I rolled an oh. eight. Uh, oh, good then. I'm What's uh, how do you pray to your god? How yeah, do you how do you let god. him know you need this energy? Big cleric energy. <laughs> Big cleric energy. Fafner holds his holy symbol and calls out to Thandor. Thandor, please grant your stone beard greatness to this man who wielded it all in front of us and hurt himself in this pit. Outstanding. Take. Pity on him. <laughs> Good job. So, so yeah, I rolled an eight, so you got plus one, so you could. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. Watch the my bones mend themselves before my eyes. I've never seen anything like that. <clears throat> Very well. So, Don't man. forget, Landon, you took a good hit earlier. So I did. To... I'm trying to save out on my spells, though, because if I'm only getting two casts a day, uh, we don't know what we're going to face down here. I am sitting at about half, but... Do you want to touch yourself in the dark? 
I might have to do a little prayer and touch myself in the dark. I think that's the right choice, honestly, at this point in time. So, yeah, I'm going to give a little prayer <clears throat> to Ig. Uh, just I, I know I have failed in my first battle of righteousness, but hereafter, with your blessing, I, I think I will be able to conquer for glory in your name. Outstanding. Make your die roll. Add right. one to it. 18. <laughs> All right, so you're it's a D8 for Pure Light Wounds. So Beautiful. roll your D8. Seven. Add one. Ooh, I am And then full add up. another one for your awesome incantation. Awesome. So you're full hit point. I am. Lucky day to be me. <clears throat> so, All right, so at this stage, we have Brandywine on the other side of the pit holding a rope, and that's where you're at. Magnus is going to suggest that Brandywine hold the other end of the pole. And I'll hold the other end of the pole, and they'll use it as a handrail going across. Yeah, probably a good idea. Great idea. Thank you. Say that again? So I'm going to extend my pole over to Brandywine, uh, at least for the first one. Um, he'll hold the one end of the pole at one side of the pit, and I'll hold the other. And the uh, party will make their way across using that as a handhold. Kind of a I'm rail. just holding the uh, the pole up by my head at this point, and uh, just, <laughs> again, just simply there for decor decoration. Uh, All right, I have a, uh, attempt to uh, navigate the the ledge with using uh, the handhold they've created. All right, very well. Um, oh, you uh, managed to shuffle across. It's not very easy, and uh, Brandywine almost falls in, but now you're on the other side, and you can do the duties. Wonderful. All right, I'll grab the uh, other end of the uh, ten foot pole here, and we'll get everybody across. I'd prefer not to go last, so I'm not abandoned on the other side. Is it okay if I slip in the middle there? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Beautiful. All right. All right. So Chadwick and Landon have both shuffled over to the other side with Brandywine. Magnus, I'll wait, I'll wait to go last before Magnus. Okay. I'll shuffle over. Very good. You do so. And then Fafnir? Yep. We need to roll D20 okay. to get across, right? No, nope. Don't need. Okay. Between the ledge and the pole? We should be good. good. So, Ashton, what are you going to do? I'm going to climb down. I'm going to hang off to one side, fall down into the pit, go over to the other side, and use the, use the rope that they have to pull me up on the other side. Very good. You do so. Now everyone's standing on the north side of the pit. Yay. Huzzah. I, th I think uh, we should you keep using the pole to poke ahead of us. I th think that's a great idea. In another life, Magnus was, this, uh, was a blind man. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is what you see on the, hopefully you can see this okay, on the other side of the pit, there's a, an elbow heading west. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> so I guess we're going to be using that 10-foot pole, and we'll, by pressing on the ground in front of us, we'll slowly make our way forward. Careful now, the next might be twice as deep. Or we'll come okay. from above. So we'll, we'll assume our original marching order. Uh, Chad working myself up front. Yep, that's okay with me. I'm fully healed. Back to normal, yep. All right, so you can see uh, the passage um, heads south. And right here, there's uh, an open pit. And it looks like at some point the uh, stone, just like this one, at some point this one gave way. And um, you can see a, about two feet of dark water at the bottom of this pit. Uh, does it seem to have the same um, footholds on the, the left or the right there? Um, no, it does not have a ledge. Okay. We uh, get, well, there's a sharp corner there. We can probably get the 10 foot pole and hold it and help someone right step across that kitty corner, you know? Kind of hug the wall and like right. slip over? Yeah. Well, so, we hold the strongest fires, the strongest people just hold that pole in place. Probably use that as support and get around. 
I don't like the idea of going down in some black water pit. Can we check the depth with the pole first? What could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> well, is it water or is it something else? Indeed. <laughs> you wanna you wanna poke the water with a ten foot pole? Yeah, poke Astrid? the water. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm gonna step back. <laughs> I, this uh, is how we discovered the handy penetrator patent pending. Yeah, patent pending. <laughs> uh a little backstory to that one. So um the original bear maze group had a ten foot pole and then it kept they, they broke it when a uh, when a stone wall came down, so it became like a seven and a half foot pole, and then it happened again, so it became like a five foot pole, and then they killed a zombie and they chopped off the zombie hand and they put it on the end of the five foot pole, and then they used that to like poke and touch things. That's wonderful. And we called we called it the handy penetrator patent pending. Patent pending. Yeah. All right. So you uh, you stick your pole into the dark pit. <laughs> and uh, do we feel anything, or is it just moving happens. around? Yeah. <laughs> is there any notable odors or aromas coming off from this? Is it stagnant water then? Uh, it well, peat water doesn't have a particularly good smell to it anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. But um, yeah, it's it doesn't smell great. It's dank and damp and yucky. Well, as the owner of Dex. Um, uh, I guess I will voluntold myself to kind of <laughs> flop over the side. So I guess the game plan is um, to go to the, the, the left edge and kind of like try to like with the 10 foot pole sort of like pushing me to guiding me towards the other ledge. That's the, the plan here, folks. Um, I'm thinking that I'll um, you're so light that I can lay the pole um, kind of diagonally across, but, Greg, correct me if we're going around a corner here. The pole should be able to extend from where I am to the other side with no problem. It so could kind yeah. of radius the corner. If, if it could hold thirty or forty pounds, that's a different story. Yeah. yeah I, okay, that would yeah. be my next question. Have things like their cake. <laughs> so well, I have I'm, a uh, I have a tack hammer and some iron spikes. I could hammer iron spike into each side. See. So you... Had a spike to hang on to above you as you went around. So, like a Tarzan, the place up and swing across. Oh, well, I mean, you could, hang, has two handholds and then just step across. And... You could do that. It would also make a lot of noise. I Can... have this residual bad feeling about this water pit. <laughs> I really do. It's not going away. Would we care if I chummed the waters with uh, one of my rations? I have seven of them. You know, throw something out there, see if anything happens while we're not divided around a corner. I mean, for science. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If, if I'm cool with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to be just whatever pemmican and you know bread or whatever I have in there. <laughs> Kind of breaking it up, scattering it around the far side of the water pit. This is know? how you make friends in dungeons. Yes. Now you're in the dungeon. Enemies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you uh, throw your uh, ration into the water, do a little sprinkle, a little sauce across yeah. there. Nothing happens. Okay. I feel better. You in no time. Can <laughs> Greg? Can the taller characters step from one side to the other? How long? Like if they radius the corner there. Or would they be able to jump? It's a couple feet, yeah, but uh, in armor it would make it more difficult. Uh, so it's an option. Ashton will jump first. Okay. Good man. All right. Bravery. Respectable. So Ashton backs up to the wall and uh, takes a run and a jump and uh, falls into a pit. Oh. Hmm. The, the same pit or a new pit? Another, Another pit. Yeah, a new pit. Yeah. <laughs> the bad feelings back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you fall down again. It's ten would... feet. You take two points of damage. Now there is a wall between the two pits, right here, and there is a ledge on this one similar to this one. So this is uh, ten feet by nine feet with the ledge. Thickness of the wall separating the water. Uh, about a foot. Okay. A stone? Yeah, stone. Okay. Well, I'm going to be that guy. Uh, hey, Greg, can I, uh, so I, I, I don't think we're going to do the, uh, platoons. Um, I'm going to try to, like, wing myself onto that ledge. Uh, like, sort of swing myself over the, uh, um, around the corner and onto the ledge. 
All right, make a dexterity check. Yep. That's a 19. That's a 19. All right, so... Well, uh, uh, plus, uh, well yeah, and, and I got my dex. So uh, Brandywine tries to do the old maneuver the there word. and yeah. um, falls into the pit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, you land on top of um, uh, Afton, and you take uh, four points of damage. Ah... Thank Whoa. you for breaking my fall, Ashton. Are they Careful both in the same pit or are they in opposite pits? We're in the same they're, pit. Yeah, they're in the same pit. They have a little party going company. on down there. Yeah. A little, a little it's our pit party. <laughs> Ain't no party like a pit okay, party. I'm going to try to uh, do the same thing. I'm going to try and uh, get it onto that one foot. No, don't. Oh, no. Do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> a zero on Yelp. Don't, no. I'm going to hug the like farthest corner in the a, pit. It's only 10 feet. How far, Like I know I, like, it was really bad last time. But um, I'm going to make it. Okay, Brain. hang on a minute. Chad, Chadwick, uh, what do you got? I'm going to roll, and I got a five. Oh. All right, so you uh, you managed <laughs> to uh, get along the ledge, and uh, you managed to shuffle over to this point. I'm assuming you're doing this without the torch. Correct. Yeah. I'm going to uh, yell down to uh, throw me the rope up, and I can help people out of the pit. Absolutely. Happy to throw the rope down and hold torch over so we have some kind of light. Hey, Greg, since we're one. in the, the pit of water of despair, uh, you just shuffle around, see if I, I nick anything and there's any uh, anything down here besides us. You don't see anything in the pit other than you. There's a little bit of water coming in from the watery pit, but nothing major. Maybe okay. just like an inch or two. This is the filter pit. Okay. Hey, keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I found a knife and I found a, a sack of money on my friend and oh, I found all sorts of things. Hmm. So we all need Ch to make So uh, on the Chadwick ledge. is going to pull up um, Ashton and Brandywine. Is that correct? Correct. In no particular order. We're right. going to send Brandywine up first. I'm going to help lift him up. So it's easier on huh, Chadwick. Okay. So uh, you pull Brandywine up and then you pull Ashton up. So the three of you are here. And uh, I'll give you a little bit more of what we got going on on the map. So you can see there's a rounded alcove at the back of this hallway. And there's a, a stone altar and there's a, like a stone box with a lid on top of the stone altar. Yeah, I'm not going to touch any of that until everybody's together. It smells like devil Did tree somebody in here. <laughs> mentioned they had a spike they can drive into the wall that we can tie a rope to climb down into this pit and then where they can pull us up on the other side? I got nothing for that. I'm I have some here. rope and a grappling hook, but... Nothing to really secure it against. Or is there anything in the hallway that we notice I can secure a grappling hook against? Um, there's not really too much you can you can use with the grappling hook. Um, yeah, I didn't think so. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically we can put you on belay to go down. So mm -hmm. there we can you can they can throw the rope over to me. I can wrap it around and put you and you can go down. And then they can do the same thing on the other side, and we can kind of work our way. Um, once that somebody can push Brandywine up, mm -hmm. kind of work it team style, and yeah. the last person up gets pulled up by everybody else. So kind of, I don't know if you guys have seen the last person you want to go down though in the pit. That's not the question. best dexterity. Uh, somebody with dexterity probably pushes like himself down, holds their hands, <laughs> and then drops down into it. It's a ten foot pit, right? Mm -hmm. So if you work your way down, holding with your hands and drop. If you're trying to do it, it's a depend depend on if Greg agrees. It wouldn't be that much of a dexterity check. Not this heavy dwarf. <laughs> um, Greg, can we walk around the edge then? So, like the other, um, I don't know if it was Chadwick or uh, we have to step to that edge and then walk around. Yeah, if you don't have anything, uh, rope or pole to use as a guide, you're gonna have to make a dexterity check to go across the ledge. All right, so uh, 
yeah, I would say, all right, let me lower you guys down into the one pit and then we'll throw the rope over and work that way. Much appreciated. Yeah. So right. if brother Landon wants to get lowered down into the first pit. That's perfect. And I'll be extra careful about it, like coming in on my hands and knees, because I'm a pretty hefty dude. I'm wearing armor, too. So, yeah, I'm going to hands and knees kind of belly on over to that wall and then slowly get dropped on in. That works with me. And then All right. Magnus is going to ask you to check around in the bottom of the pit. Yeah, absolutely. Do we have someone at the back um, maybe just take a quick look back, make sure nothing's coming on down? Faulkner looks around. He's well, we still over here. That we all that I fell into, so there's some protection for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pits are clear. All right. Uh, is everyone over now? The dwarf is still on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, roll a d6 there, Fafner. Four. Four. Very well. The uh, so Magnus is going to lower himself down into the pit that Brother Landon is in, same kind of style. Mm -hmm. um, well, damn it, you could almost jump and grab on. Right, well, I can do the foothold thing for you. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to kind of scurry my body over, kind of lower myself in, and then grab with my hands and drop drop into the pit. You do so, and then do that to go up, um, and then uh, the dwarf. Uh, so Fafnir, um, can I? Can I use my grappling hook to put it on the edge of the pit and then lower myself down in with the rope? Sure. Okay. I will do that. Get down into the first pit. Then you are. Try and be there to catch if he falls, you know? Yeah. I, I think I'm going to leave this here so we can use it to climb back up on the other side. Didn't you guys have a rope hanging on the other side that we can cross over to the second pit? I think it's all over. It's the same pull rope. No, I have my own rope and grappling hook that I use to get down in the first pit. Mm -hmm. So I'll use the second rope that they have in the second pit if they throw it over to climb up mm -hmm. and over into the second. Good. You're there. And I, and I can help people on getting up. Thank so. you. <laughs> Puppies. Right. And uh, old Bill will do the same thing going down and up. Magnus, how tall are you? Six, seven. Oh, okay. Very helpful. Thank you. So, like a ten foot, <laughs> a ten foot pit is not huge right. for my yeah. character's height. So, um, I'll kind of prop myself up and, and go over as the last one. If every, I'll help everybody else over, and then I'll work my way into the to the to the pit that every, I guess we're all wedged in there now. I thought well, we um, to the at least three are up here. Who else is up now? Help me climb on out of this pit. I I wish to not dwell in the earth. <laughs> All right, you're pulled up. Perfect. Four. Everybody, I'm going to put my hand up to uh, get helped out. Uh huh. There's a rope as well. together. <laughs> as this is going on, I keep looking south just to make sure nothing's coming at us. Uh huh. You're good. All of you are now up. Perfect. Perfect. Um, make right. sure the way to the shrine is clear. <laughs> Look up, look around, yep. Yeah, still using the 10-foot pole to uh, slowly and cautiously uh, go towards that altar that we check the sides. The place style. is so riddled with danger, Indiana there must style. be something. I, uh, Magnus is going to look for... Uh, the reeks of a trap. Magnus is going to look for a secret <laughs> door. <laughs> All right, so uh, you tap along with your 10-foot pole and... Uh, the floor gives way oh, oh, yes. to another pit. <laughs> and this one has a ledge right here. You know, Greg, this uh, this dungeon is really pity. Mm. It is. It's a pit. <laughs> I'm sensing this reoccurring theme. <laughs> What's the theme for this dungeon? Pits. <laughs> From the far side there, could I get a little description of that shrine once again? Sure. So there's a, um, in this alcove, there's a stone altar on top of it. It looks like a stone box about this wide. And there's a, uh, uh, what appears to be a stone, a flat stone lid on top of it. The sarcophagus size or much smaller? Much smaller. Bread box size. Decorative? 
Uh, no, you don't see any decoration on it. We probably can't really see from above on it either, though, from this distance. If there's a design on the top of it, maybe. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. From where you're standing, you don't see anything. Hmm. Is it chest high? Uh, waist high? For, um, it's more like waist, yeah, waist high or slightly lower. Okay. Okay. So we could potentially see it, but it may just be too far to pick oh. up details. I Greg, have holy I... water at the ready. Okay. Greg, can I check around for uh, secret doors? Where? Um, well, <laughs> on the one landing that we're on, so on both sides of the hallway. Okay, I'll take 10 minutes. I'm going right, down into the pit that we just uh, discovered. All right. So, uh, well, first of all, you don't see anything on the right or the left relative to secret doors. Okay. Thank you. Who lowered themselves down? I'm sorry. Ashton will. Okay. So he's using the rope first. that you have here. Ashton lowers himself down. He's now standing in this pit. How do you feel about that? Anything down here? Nope. There's nothing open on the ceiling. Like, it's just ceiling, right? Like, it's not going to fall down and crush him, perhaps, or there's no creature lying <laughs> in wait in a vent of some kind. I can't give you that kind of information. Are we going to head up the sledge here the same way? Like, ten foot pull style, get the party across the ledge? Yep. Crab walk. The All box? Right. Yep. Okay, so I'll. Uh, well, I guess we have the ten foot pole, so I can go first with uh, the assistance of someone holding the pole and trying. Well, Ashton is still down in the pit. Is that right? Correct. Or we could just do that too. We can lower ourselves down and try and climb up the other side, but there's no one there. If I can try to get across, I can help you climb back up. Make a dexterity here, Jet. Seven. I step away from the person that's trying to <laughs> shoot me in the wall. <laughs> Chadwick uh, successfully um, crab walks across the pit and is uh, standing just about here, right in front of the stone alt creepy stone altar and stone box. Okay, I'm just going to stay away from the altar as best I can while holding the other side of the 10 foot pole and help everybody else across. Very well, you do so. I'm very eager to cross. I will go as soon as possible. <laughs> I guess once everybody's across, we can use ropes to help the other two out of the pit. Okay. Perfect. So there's not a lot of space over here at this stage. Who is on this side right now, other than Chadwick? Landon. Yeah, I think Brother Landon. Over, yeah. All right. I will, that's a... in the, I will stay in the pit. Okay. So the two of you are standing here in front of the creepy stone altar. Yes, indeed. Well, you don't have to label it like that. It's just an <laughs> altar. <laughs> <laughs> You're standing in front of the mundane, completely plain looking altar. I'd like to take a good long look at it, holding my holy symbol in one hand, uh, kind of, you know, just not really attempting anything. It's just intensely looking. Okay, well, Brother Landon's doing that. I will uh, be at the ready just in case anything springs out at him. Right. Uh, you take a look and you don't see anything unusual. You can see that it definitively has that stone lid that's on top of it. Um, like a, it's almost like a, like a miniature version of the sarcophagus, that, but it's more square than rectangular and maybe just like a, a foot or two across. This might seem odd, but I'd like to very cautiously tiptoe forward and I'd like to take my holy symbol off my neck or whatever and I'd set it on top of the lid while whispering some kind of hymn or incantation, whatever. Very well, you do so, and nothing happens. Okay. Snatch that back. <laughs> yeah. Bernie Warren, where are you right now? Uh, I think I'm still across. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross the, uh, the ledge, make a dex check, and get on, get on over there. All right. Well, I think you've got the pull, so uh, between the ledge and the pull, you can make it without a dex check. Oh, very good. Um, okay, so 
Um, I'm going to just come up and I'm going to go behind the altar and just, uh, uh, is there, is it just wall there? Uh, yeah. Uh, so rounded alcove. Yeah. I'm going to give the rounded alcove, uh, uh, a fondling and I'm going to attempt to, uh, see if anything latches, opens, undoes, moves, swivels, swings, or jars. Um, you don't notice anything that moves, swings, Swiggles or jars. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um, turn my attention to the altar. Mm -hmm. um, there's a box on there, you say? Mm -hmm. Brother Landon, do you uh, sense evil from this? I have done what I could at uh, what little distance I have, but without opening its contents, I fear I can't tell better. Well, open the contents is what I heard. I open the box. All right. Okay. The Ark of the uh, Covenant saves me in holy fury. And I'm going to be <laughs> holding that holy symbol out on my little chain or whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even okay. check for traps. I just go right in. For, for going all your uh, knowledge and uh, techniques taught to you by the Thieves Guild in yep. favor of throwing caution to the wind, you open the top of the box and... The glow of a medallion. It, you're bathed in the glow of a silver medallion from inside oh. the box. Well, it's better than a poison dart in the head, so that's good. Do <laughs> I recognize it at all as some kind of uh, religious relic, holy sigil, anything of that nature? Um, make a wisdom check. I rolled under my wisdom. Okay. Uh, you take a look at uh, this medallion and it has a, a chain uh, around it intended to be worn uh, on the neck. And in the center of this silver medallion are three depressions in the shape of the crescent moons you notice on the sarcophagus uh, in, the bar in, the, uh, in the barrel mount. Hmm. Hmm. This reeks of pagan deviltry. I say we destroy it and move on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this pagan deviltry may be critical to gaining uh, us some gold, and that could help fund a church or some other uh, pro, pro, proactive nature. So I think we should take it with us. I turn my eyes, do as thine wish. <laughs> ah, I love it when they turn the other cheek. Uh, I, uh, I kind of, before I grab it out of the box, I kind of try to give a look or... Uh, hey, Magnus, could you uh, pole poke it just a little? In the box? In Pole poke it in the box to move it around a little. Very well. You can do that. Okay. Um, you uh, you do so, and uh, nothing happens. Ah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do the good old yoink and uh, pick it up. Okay, you do so. And uh, it's kind of like a big flavor flav. Nice. Sort of medallion. Super, super bling with the three crescent moons pointing downward. Yeah. I almost want it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You'll always know what time it is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll put it in the backpack. I am an honorable thief. We earned the loot together. I, I'll put it in my, my backpack. Um, and then uh, turn my attention to the... Uh, to the sarcophagus. Um, does it have the same three little uh, buttons or dots? No. So we've got a stone altar with this box on top of it. And right. the box um, had the same sort of structure, just in a smaller manner. It had the sort of stone lid. And you right. took that off, and the medallion was inside it. OK. Um, so does, again, does this uh, little stone altar so uh, does it look movable at all, or is it sort of a fixed? It's a fixed. Okay. Is it possible we missed a secret door down in the last pit? No, I, I think I think there's something up here. Um, I guess I'm going to fondle the other sides of the walls. Uh, I guess we'll take 10 and 10. Or if someone could fondle... Uh, behind me, and I'll fondle in front and see if we can't uh, find any secret doors uh, on either side of the uh, the altar. Are we talking like a regular fondling or a crab fondling? 
No, it would be it would be a padding down uh, with a sort of circular rub down the middle to make sure it opens up. By crumb. <laughs> All right, so you uh, do the fondling, and um, it takes ten minutes, and uh, you don't notice anything. Did, did anyone fondle behind me to make sure the other wall had? Uh... <clears throat> Did it if it had anything? What was old Bill talking about? This was supposed to be the the great treasure down here. Are we missing something? Uh, I was going to do the wall behind you there. Okay. I'm going to yell up from the pit and ask him what's going on with all the fondling up there. <laughs> well, if you want to join in, if you could start searching those walls down there, we see if something opens up to your touch. Faulkner's down in the pit with Ashton. He'll use his stone sense to check the walls in the nice. pit. Very well, you do so. And it looks secure. You don't notice anything unusual in the pit. Right. So, ceiling. I take the 10 foot pole and start. Can I, how high is the ceiling? Um, 10 feet. Um, so, I'm going to start tapping my way along the ceiling and see if I can see anything that uh, might open up. Yep, ceiling looks clear. <laughs> are we in the right pit? <laughs> right? Say again? I said, are we in the right pit? So, okay, we've checked the walls on left and right, and then uh, in the, uh, the, the alcove behind us. Have we tried uh, to move the box out of the way? Like, maybe there's something underneath? Like, has that been attempted? Or check the walls of the pedestal, stone pedestal itself. I'm going to try to push that box out of the way to see if there's something underneath. Okay. Um, you attempt to push the box, but it's actually carved as part of the altar. It's just the lid that moves off of it. Okay. As you're, uh, as you're playing around with that, um, you hear the flapping of wings from behind you to the north, and uh, two creepy bat-like creatures come... Uh, at the party. So, Derek, will you roll a d6 to see if you're surprised? Okay. Uh, three. Three? Okay. You you hear the flapping of wings, so you're not surprised, so it's an, it's going to be an initiative to begin uh, a combat. So, uh, who wants to roll for the party? I can roll. <laughs> three. I rolled a four. All right, so... Um, I'm just going to pick a uh, number randomly, so I'll use seven, and uh, it's going to be the first character, which would be uh, Ashton's down in the pit, so it's not going to be him. It's going to be Chadwick. You're in the next in the order. Mm -hmm. So this bat-like creature flies at you, and uh, what's Tracy? AC three. Uh, AC three. Okay, that's a miss, and the... Uh, the second one attacks old Bill. Oh, no. Rules a 19 on old Bill. That's definitely going to be a hit. Bill! And so <laughs> what happens is that this, um, this creature um, latches, like it flies right at old Bill, and uh, it extends this kind of proboscis and jams it into his shoulder. He takes um, three points of damage. Oh, oh no. No, no Bill. Um, so Bill... Bill falls to his knees with the blow, and he is uh, not doing well. And um, I can get a pen that works. So then, yeah, that's uh, that's the majority of his hit points. He is not doing well, and this thing is uh, sucking his blood out. So um, we're gonna Chadwick. Your or excuse me, Ashton's down in the pit. So Chadwick, you can attack. There's two. There's one in front of you, and then there's one attacking old Bill. I'm gonna try to get rid of that one attacking old Bill. I can right. with my broadsword now. So if you want to attack, if you attack uh, this creature that's attached to Bill and you do damage, it'll be spread between the creature and and Bill. So if you if you what you could do is you could try to grab it with your hands and pull it off. Sure. Yeah, I don't okay. want to feed it on him. Let's get it off of him. So make a make um you can grab it. So just make a strength check to try to pull it off. Okay, so strength is 16. So you're going to have to drop your sword. Okay, so I rolled a 7. Okay, you rolled a, a 7. 
and yeah, uh, that's under your strength. So you grab it and you pull it off. What, what do you want to do with it? I'm going to hold it so someone can hit it with their weapon out in front of me. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And then um, let's do Brandywine. What do you want to do? So I'm above the pit and there's this uh, sucky, sucky creature that has been pulled off of him that he's holding. Yes. Um, could I uh, basically just like wing a knife down and try to hit it and not my friend? You could try. You can certainly try. <laughs> on one, two, or three, you're going to hit him. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's out of one, two, or three. So I've got uh, 14 with my modifier. Uh, 14 is a hit. Excellent. Nice. Uh, All your damage. D4. I believed in you from the start. Hey, four. Uh, okay. Do I add uh, four, five, six? I add plus two for my decks. So yes, you do. On that. Yeah. All right. So, um, so Chadwick is like holding this thing by its creepy bat-like wings, and uh, you throw your dagger, and it um, hits the thing right in the face, right between the eyes, and uh, squeals, and then shudders a, a minute and dies. Nice. And then, uh, so uh, Fafnir, what do you want to do? I'm down in the pit with Ashton. Oh, Unless so you are a beastie nearby. There's not much I can do. No, okay, very good. Uh, Landon, you're up. There's I'm in an odd position. Um, I have holy water and a torch in either hand, so I am going you can to wave your torch at it or try to hit. Oh hit it with yeah, it. Uh, that's a great idea. I'm I'm going to kind of try and fend it off a little bit. I'm not really trying to be aggressive with my torch, though. I would much rather try and get my holy water maybe switched out with my uh, flail or mace or something of that nature, if that's possible. Sure. Well, attack with your torch. Let's start there. Oh, I can, okay, cool. You can definitely uh, whack it. I am hitting an armor class of three. Uh, yeah, you hit, and you need a 13. Groovy. All right. Uh, what does a torch do? 1d4. Groovy. Oh, where did all my d4s go? There we are. One whole point of burning damage. Ooh. Okay. You Big do uh, one point of uh, burning damage. But it actually does, it has this like sort of like uh, this bulbous sort of body with like weird fuzzy things, almost like a kiwi. And so yeah. you light it on fire. So this thing is like fluttering around and it's now on fire and leaving a smoke trail behind it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, no need for a torch. <laughs> uh, the, does someone have hold of one of the creatures still? No. Chadwick. Oh, no. No. Okay, that one's dead. So, so that one is dead, and so I'm going to take a swing with my bastard sword at the flying smokestack. Yep. And Greg, I got an 18. Do I add my strength modifier to that roll, or does an 18 hit? 18 is going to hit, so you can roll your damage and add your strength modifier, yeah. So four plus two is six. Okay. Um, you bring your sword forward and you uh, pierce its body and, um, and it uh, goes right through the other side. And now you've got a smoking bat-like creature that's dead on the end of your sword. Huzzah! <laughs> you just invented the shish kebab. You did. Um, Magnus kind of looks down because he can only eat raw food and that's already cooked. So he's going to just kind of shake it off his sword and drop it down in the pit. Okay. To the depths it's slithered from. It uh, hits Fafnir in the head and then bounces on the floor. <laughs> oh, Magnus barbecue. Oh. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> Yummy. Okay. So was there, there was a crescent moon symbol somewhere down in this area? There is on the, the three crescent moons are um, little depressions on the face of the medallion. Depression. Okay. Can we maybe uh, take Sorry, I, I have to interrupt. Uh, Bill, is he super dead or kind of <laughs> dead? Bill is, um, he, he's uh, gone all sort of like gray and pale in the face and he didn't have a lot to work with, but he's like, He's uh, not not well. Okay. He's still alive. <laughs> we will get your family yet. your body. <laughs> I'm not I got to some yet. rags where the hole is. <laughs> <clears throat> D 
does uh any does the priest or the cleric have a stabilize yeah. or a, a well, medic? Can we I have him? one spell left. So one of the things you can do is um, immediately after a combat, you can bind wounds. So binding wounds is basically bandaging each other or bandaging, bandaging wounded uh, characters. It can heal a 1d3 hit points, but it takes 10 minutes and also includes a random monster roll. So you can take the time to do it, but if there's a random, if a random monster appears, then you don't get any hit points, and then you have to deal with a random monster. Yeah, but if we uh, get ready for an attack, if it's possible, then we can save Bill and give him some, at least a couple hit points while we're ready for a possible attack. So don't go after old Bill the first time. <laughs> I would love to tend to his wounds. He's yeah, done exactly. so much for us. Yeah, I was about to say, this goes out to Ryan. We can't kill Bill. <laughs> oh! All right, so you start to bind wounds, and uh, you hear another <laughs> round of as another <laughs> creepy bat things go coming toward you. Yeah, I was I already at ready, all cost. So. <laughs> I'll take the initiative. To you. Uh, so we're going to uh, roll for initiative. <laughs> three. I rolled a five. Yeah, that's not great. Okay, so three creepy bat like things. Uh, heard the dinner bell. <laughs> and um, we're going to use a D7. We're going to ignore eight, just randomly determine who gets attacked. So the first character, Ashen's still down there. So Chadwick's going to be the first character. And a seven's going to be a miss. Then uh, the second one will go after Brandywine. Oh. Rolls a six and misses. And then the last one will be uh, the Fafnir's down. And so it'll be the next one. It'll be Landon. Ah. And ooh. An 18. Ah. Verily, a palpable hit. <laughs> uh, one point of damage. And you've got this thing that's stuck its uh, proboscis into your throat, and uh, it's enjoying a tasty meal of your blood. It'll pay. So that's the uh, attacks that's, of the creepy that. bat creatures. And the first up will be Chadwick. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh use my broadsword and try to attack one of these flying beasts. So I roll the three. Three is a miss. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Brandywine. Daniel, what would you like to do? I am going to, so, um, so if I take, if I'm, I'm with brother Landon, cause I was near Bill. So if I use my short sword on this uh, this thing, um, brother uh, brother Landon's going to pay some of the price, right? It, yeah, damage will be divided between him and the uh, and the creature, and that's probably not a good idea because he's yeah. Well, actually, how many hit points do you have there, uh, Landon? Sitting at seven. Well, that's not bad. You can oh, take it. Be worse. Nah. Yeah, because there's no way I'm pulling it off. So like that's a big negatory. Yeah, I'm going to take out my Go short sword it. and have at, have at it. Landon right. approved. Um, twelve. Uh, oh, um, 12. Uh, no, I. Uh, that's a strength, so just straight up twelve. Okay. Uh, can you get to a thirteen? Um, not uh, unless I use hook by crook or crook. So no. Okay. So that's a miss, and you just miss Landon's face. Okay. You fool! The thing, not me. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't land in a hit. Okay. Um, Fafnir's down the pit. Uh, Landon, so you've got. Can we use a sling? All right, to sling a rock up at him. You can. Around? You can try to grab it and pull it off. I'm gonna be trying to pinch off its proboscis-like thing and just <laughs> grab onto that with both hands, dropping whatever I had for you know taping up a uh, bill. All right, um, go. So make a strength check to try to pull this thing off your throat. Two is under my strength. Outstanding. So you pull the thing off. You're now holding it sort of like Chadwick did, grabbing it by the wings. It's trying to flap away. What do you want to do? Just start bending and breaking. <laughs> awesome. Now roll your strength again. Absolutely. Uh, 18 total. Oof. So not a lot of strength there. So you, um, your strength is what? Uh, 12. Okay, so you uh, you grabbed it successfully, and you pulled it off, and you're trying to like rip off its wings, and uh, but you're not successful. It's too tough. So then we've got uh, Magnus. 
So, Brother Landon is holding the thing still, or did he let go of it then? He's still holding oh, I've it. Oh, I got and it. There's two, there's two more flying around. All right. I'm going to attack one that's uh, flying around there. Okay. Uh, 14. Uh, and, Greg, mm -hmm. I, you, so is that a hit? That's a hit. And, again, with the Bastard Sword... Oh, a whopping three. Okay, that'll actually take one down. Nice. So uh, there are two remaining. There's one flying around, and there's one that Landon's holding by the wings. Next up would be uh, uh, Old Bill. So Old <laughs> Bill is not feeling very well, but he does have a broadsword, and he'll try to uh, slice the one that Landon's holding. Oh, what is that? Oh, no. <laughs> We are oh, in Bill's this together, okay. brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Landon rolls. Uh, the broadsword two plus one is three points of damage, and it kills that one. <laughs> old, old Bill's been uh, roped old open. Bill. So Landon's holding it like this, and uh, Old Bill, barely hanging on, comes down with his broadsword and cuts it in twain. And Landon's covered in green blood and his own. That was for us both. <laughs> Go, Bill. All right, so there's uh, one flying around. So that was the end of the round, so it's a new... Was there any spin. chance for me to use a sling out of this pit to hit one flying around? If you want to try on your turn, absolutely, you could try to do that. Yeah, it's, so uh, use my longbow as well, please. I did okay. ask you. So let, we need, who's up for to roll initiative? I can roll initiative if I haven't done it yet. Okay. Three. A three? Yep. I will do two. So, uh, Afton, you, uh, you're you looking up with your bow? Yes, sir. I'm going to take a shot with my bow. Excellent. 16. Uh, 16's a hit. That's a D8, right, for a long bow? D6 for any yeah. bow. Mm -hmm. The difference between long and short is range. Four points of damage. Four points. Okay. So it only had four points. So looking I... up from the pit... You uh, shoot your bow, and it pierces the uh, creepy sturge, and the arrow continues up into the ceiling where it lodges, and the uh, the sturge flaps its wings a couple times, and then green blood drifts down on your head. Yay! Go team. Go team. All right, so the, uh, the creepy uh, dead death creatures are now dead. And um, you can try to bind wounds again or not. Uh, Have we discovered a way to go yet? I don't think no. so. No, we haven't figured out a way to go. I think the way to go is out. <laughs> Have we? Did we check the bottom of the staircase on that <laughs> corner bend there? No. Oh. Hey, Ashton. How? How? What's your agility like? Or uh, your dex? He can't give you that kind of information. Oh, I can get around. <laughs> I, I'm I'm the nimble one. Okay, that makes sense. Fafner climb up out of the pit to use his uh, stone sense on the end of this tunnel here around the uh, altar just to see if there's something they may have missed. Okay, you climb out of the pit and uh, using your uh, dwarven eyes for stone, you give it a good thorough look and you don't notice anything unusual about the stonework at, at the alcove. Neither on the altar? Nor on the altar. Okay. Looks like regular stone, boys. Magnus um, is going to suggest to Brandywine that the amulet maybe used, can be used to open something? Well, I think maybe like there's symbols on the sarcophagus up above. Maybe you can use it in conjunction with those symbols. Because one's a... One sticks out and one's depression. Maybe you can put those together and manipulate the symbols. Yeah, so I'll take the um, the medallion if there's if there's sort of a depression for it, try to try to line it up. Um there is no depression. Okay. There are well, just the, uh, recesses the, in the medallion. There what was the on uh, the sarcophagus what we first encountered in the first burrow? There was okay. three moons on it. No, they were sticking out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those appeared to be... Um, Were they uh, similar size? 
It's symbol. a similar symbol, but those appeared to be the mechanism to enter the crypt as opposed to yeah. something that you put the medallion on. Maybe there's a rock that has uh, one of the shapes carved into it nearby. We can use the medallion with it. I'm going to look around and see if there's any like little moon symbols in any of the rocks on the walls in this area. No, you've checked that alcove very thoroughly, all of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you see anything in the pit that uh, had had the symbol or anything? No. They were down there. The water. Yeah. We could try uh, breaking the wall in between to evenly distribute the water level, and there might be something revealed subaquatically. No, I think I think that's uh, that's a lot. And we checked down the pit for any kind of doors. We already did that, right? Yeah. There's nothing yep. in the pit. I used my stone yeah. since there, too. Didn't pick up anything. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, Greg, did we check the ceiling, um, and we didn't find <clears throat> anything there. Nope. Where I guess we need to go back and check the bottom of the uh, stairs there to the left. Well... It's seeming like the area that we didn't really touch is the little L as we came in between the two big pits. Did we check the between the uh, the first pit and the second pit that those wall areas? No. So we can check that too. Yeah, it's the only thing left to do, I think. Yeah, I think once we clear out those two areas, then that's I don't know where to go. Where do these little bat things come from? Again. Good question. Flew in from outside in the barrel maze, barrel mound. Can we tell where they came in from, Greg? No, no, I can't give you that kind of information. All right, so if we do make I, our way... Do I ahead. know what these creatures are? Um, no, you've never seen them before. Uh, if we make our way back, um, and then we can check that area. Um, so we're thinking that the L there has, could have something, um, and we haven't checked the first pit for, we did, or we, we thoroughly exhausted the pits too. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really changed the tone there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I was, before our large spider friend showed up, I, uh, right was saying we checked the second two pits or the the last two pits but not the first two in the bottom i think well this one you've checked these this one has water and okay. um your pit sorry, detector set off yeah i just kicked around the bottom of it but i didn't really check for um passageways does bill know anything about these three moons <clears throat> um Bill knows that uh, the they're the people that first created the first settlers that, that started to create the mounds um, were the followers of uh, a druid, and in the lore of the town, they the the crescents were associated with a druid, but that was generations ago, and he doesn't know any more than that. Hmm. As a ranger, do I know anything about the? Crested moons. <clears throat> um, I think it's reasonable that you would know that uh, that there was an order of druids. Um, they were, you know, um, they were regulators regulators of the balance, so they weren't necessarily good. Um, they weren't necessarily evil either, but they would they would do what they needed to do in order to preserve the balance, and that didn't always work out for the early settlers of Helix. Uh, okay, so uh, if we're going to be taking a minute to discuss everything going on here, I want to bring up that the idea of that water pit. We have not checked the depths of that, and I, it goes against my instinct on every level, but if no one else would volunteer to check in it, I will get down in my skivvies and go feel around. <laughs> it, it feels like certain death, but they're, I don't know. I just have a feeling about that water. Hmm. 
All right. Yeah, like, well, we'll I won't let the comrade go alone, so I'll go help him. Uh huh. Yeah, Thank we'll, you. We'll, uh, uh, Magnus, and maybe we'll we'll try to shimmy back over and hold a uh, rope down to for them to get down. <clears throat> that would be wonderful. All right. So you're gonna uh, move over to this area. Yeah, that's what it's sounding like. Okay. Right. It's not like he's going back to the first pit with the water. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, to the. Yeah, I want to go to the water pit. Yeah. So we kind of want. Okay, to so. On. Do we want to make it back uh, to the elf? And it takes a fair amount of time. You all shuffle down over here. Um. And then go across, use the pole, get the first person across the ledge. Mm -hmm. Same thing over here. This is a bit more tricky. Um, so you're at the stage now where uh, you're going to need to rest. So you've been moving in armor uh, for a while. So you're going to have to rest. Yeah. I'd be like a short rest? Rest in the yeah, bottom of that pit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'd use stone sense on it, but I'll go ahead and do it before resting. Smart man. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, as you're, uh, you, you, everyone gets over to this area here, and as you uh, start to sit down um, to take a rest, um, uh, Fafnir, pardon me, uses his uh, stone sense, takes a look around, and he notices the oh. outline <laughs> of a door. Of course. Hmm. By Thane Door's beard. Look here. As I reach up and show the outline to the rest of the group. I stop mm -hmm. undressing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. That's uh, for at the tavern later. <laughs> <laughs> so um in the uh that L shape, there is there's a, apparently a maybe a door. Uh, yeah, you um Fafnir could see the you now that he stopped and took a good look at it. He can indeed and see the outline of a door in the flagstone. Mm -hmm. uh, does it, is there anything with the medallion in it, or uh, I fondle the door? Uh, does it have a opening, a jarring, a moving, a sliding, a jutting? I'm assuming no. we're doing that after we rest. Yes. Yeah. That would yeah, be yeah. All right, well, let's slump up. Uh, you start putting your clothes on. We have some rations. Uh, and keep looking to the right to make sure nothing surprises us. Okay. Um, ten minutes pass. You are now refreshed. Huzzah. And uh, you proceed to fondle the secret door opening. And uh, it doesn't push inward. Uh, you can't quite tell. Um, Are there any uh, loose stones on it that I can pull out that maybe are uh, hiding... Maybe a lever or a button. You do notice one stone that's uh, jutting out from the wall, just about a uh, half inch more so than the other stones. Brandywine, look at this. There's a stone here. Maybe I'm not sure what we should do with this, but you seem to be knowledgeable in these ways. And the rest of the party, you try it, Brandywine. The rest of the party stand over here. <laughs> 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 uh, I prepare the brace to rock. That was the sub, that was the subtext of what Chadwick was suggesting. <laughs> Go, little buddy. All right, let's do this. <laughs> All right, so you, uh, yeah, so the um, you fondle the stone, and you notice that it can pull out towards you. I two-hand it and uh, give it a good tug. All right. And uh, so the stone pulls out uh, a few inches, and you can see it's attached to a metal rod. Uh, I try to turn it. Okay. You turn it clockwise, and you hear stone grinding on stone, and the door opens to reveal a hallway beyond. At the edge of your torchlight, Right about here, you can see some stairs descending into the dark. You have found us a way forward, my friend. Excellent work, Favnar. Uh, it is by the guidance of Thane Dur himself, not I. False gods. <laughs> <laughs> well, but... What is it, Brandywine? I'll be buying the first round tonight. <laughs> um... All right, are we uh, heading back into marching order? Is it uh, 10 feet wide, Greg? So two by It two. is. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to marching order. I'll, uh, Chadwick, if you want me to hold the torch, I can behind uh, 
um, whoever the hell I am behind. Yes, my uh, friend. Let's continue. You are behind yes. our treasure. Yes. Third in the order. Very good. Let's uh, let's start uh, heading our way down. All right. Is Chadwick back in second position? Yes. Okay. Who has the? Uh, how are you proceeding exactly? Are we using our ten foot pole to uh, proceed cautiously forward? Who's using it? I'm in the back, so if we're going that way, I can't. You, I'd have to hand the pole up to somebody else. I got it. Okay, you'll have to uh, sheath your sword. Yeah, I'll sheath my sword and use the use the pole. Okay. Um, you move forward. You can see the staircase descends a uh, total of twenty feet, hmm. and the uh, hallway. goes like this and right here there's a portcullis a closed portcullis yes sir what's the condition of it is it rusted away yeah it's rusty I listen for noises Um, it's all clear. So it looks like probably two strong people will need to grab the portcullis and maybe raise it. Um, the Chubbuck will uh, go up and attempt to raise the portcullis. Okay. Uh, as you Just to give you a little more detail, as you're taking a look through the portcullis, you can see the hallway extends 20 feet and turns north. Then... It also extends to the west. You can see the edge of another portcullis. And also right here, there's a lever. You know, I say just uh, let's just leave it and go have some drinks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we got a big ass medallion we can get rid of yeah we got some gems like we're, we're set fellas one more room one more room <laughs> <laughs> okay uh if you guys stand at the ready i'll try and lift this portcullis yeah so we can get access good can we okay can we can i assist with that or Yes, you can. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. step aside so Magnus can get up front. Yep. <laughs> Everyone okay, shuffle. so um, what's your, Magnus, what's your strength? Strength is 17, so plus two. Mm -hmm. And Chadwick? 16, and also a plus two. While All they're right. doing that, Greg, I'm going to look up the stairs, and, uh, you know, dagger ready sort of the deal. All right, so uh, the two of them uh, just barely managed to raise the portcullis but it's straining it's right at the edge of their strength and they've lifted it about a foot or so and it's making one one hell of a noise and um you uh see the or you hear as you're you're raising it and it's making all this creaking and groaning uh some shuffling of feet from down by this portcullis and you can see two of those uh creepy undead guys that you saw up in the barrel mound that are running towards the dinner bell that you just rang. Yeah, I'd say we uh, just drop it. <clears throat> drop yeah, it. I, yeah, we have that door, right rushes forward and holds his holy symbol by Thane Doer's beard. Get back. Okay. You uh, attempt to turn? Yeah. Okay. So um, make roll your uh, d20. 13. All right, 13. Um, uh, Thane Dur does not bless you this day. And uh, the undead oh. continue to shuffle <laughs> forward. They're now at the uh, boat at the lever. And we dropped, we already dropped the portcullis down. Right? Okay, well, I didn't hear confirmation, but we'll say you dropped it. And now the, uh, the zombies shuffle forward, and now they're pressed against the... Uh, uh, the iron bars, the portcullis, and they're 
clawing at you, trying to get through. Can I hack their arms off as they're pushed through the portcullis? <laughs> sure. You chop you chop their arms off, and uh, and then they're like trying to like gnaw the bars and <laughs> uh, trying to get you that way. <laughs> Well, I don't think we can use them Walking Dead style. So uh, I, I say, if you got some time, uh, just take some stabby stabbies and uh, yeah. let's get rid of these Start guys. Through their heads, I guess. Yep. Yep, you can do so quite easily. They're mindless, and uh, you, there's a few squishes, and they're pretty decayed, and so they fall over and slump against the wall. Can do we have something that can hit? How far is that lever? About 15 feet away. Just outside is, of the temple. Is it around the corner? No. It's right before the corner. Oh, uh, use a rope and lasso yeah, it. Yeah, we got the rope and I've got a grappling hook too if you want Ooh. to try that. Yeah, somebody with some dexterity. That wouldn't be me. Well, you tell me what you're going to do. Um, so I'll uh, put the rope and my grappling hook together and then I'll... Uh, Swing it through the portcullis and try to uh, pull it down the uh, the lever. Okay, make a dex check. I will. Uh, and it's under, correct? Correct. Two. Two. Yeah. So you swing your grappling hook, and uh, with your nimble fingers, you manage to attach it to the lever. Uh, give it a good tug to release the lever. <clears throat> okay, and uh, it's 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 sticky because it's um, rusty. But you do, with some help, manage to uh, pull it down. And again, you hear you hear this grinding of stone on stone as the and, and metal as the gate starts to pull up, and it's making one hell of a noise. Okay, um, I'm gonna kind of like huck the rest of my rope through so that it doesn't get caught up in the gate on the other side. Good, sure, good plan. <laughs> so the the, uh, the portcullis is raised about uh, five feet in height, and it it. It uh, stops there. Do we hear anything after it stopped? Any uh, footsteps or motion? No. Yeah. We need to be, bring some uh, pig lard back and uh, lube this all up. <laughs> Magnus decides he's going to invent this new product called Whiny Door 40. So <laughs> WD40. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. I, uh, I guess if we, if we lift this door up, that one foot, can I? jam one of my iron spikes into the, uh, the side of it to keep it up for us? You can. I'll make a lot of noise. We already made a bunch well, of Yeah, noise. we've already in for a pen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we going to do that? We can use. We can close the door after we yeah, get Yeah, but if it's open, we at least have an escape route without having to hold it up and get everybody out while things are coming after us. No, it went up by itself, correct? No. No, it didn't. We have the we one have that the we're, we're behind. We There's two of them. Yeah, the lever got it up, so it's not going to come Unless we push the lever down, it's not going to come. It's not going to close. Lever open the one that we're in front of up, or the further one. The, you're, you're, you've just raised this port close okay. here. Okay. Okay, so we still have our port calls to deal with. No, we ours far went out. One. It's the far ours one. Went out. Okay. Far one. Okay. Very good. You're right here. You yeah. attach the grappling hook to that lever, and you raise the one that we we're standing in front of. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I'm gonna search the, uh, the the bodies real quick. Good call. Okay. Um, on one of them, you find a, at a pouch on its back, uh, you find a scroll tube. Ooh. Oh, fancy! Ooh. And the other one had uh, a pouch with um, nine gold pieces. All right. So the scroll tube Magnus will offer to. Um, do we have two priests? Do we have the the cleric priest and the other priest? And cleric and brother no. We have okay. a human priest and a human cleric and a dwarf cleric. Do we have an old cleric and a young cleric? We have an old have priest and a young. I'm priest. quite young. young. <laughs> You're uh, hey, Craig, Yeah. How yes. long will it take us to get back to Helix from here? Uh, it's about a four-hour march. Through the swamp to Helix. And we're roughly sitting at um, sometime in the early evening? No. Okay. We also have to remember there was another party that was supposed to come and raid this spot. 
as to how we got the information in the first place. If we leave and go back to town, more than likely they'll follow in our footsteps and get all the good loot. Well, we could close the door because I'm thinking, okay, we, we don't want to be going back at night either because I don't like things eating me in the barrel maze. So we probably have a couple more hours at best before we have to trek back in the night. We could leave a lot of graffiti as a ruse. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we could probably close this door, and as long as they're not perceptive, uh, the door coming down to these steps, um, we could at least seal it back up, uh, and, and yeah, hopefully they won't discover it. We can leave Bill here as a guard. <laughs> oh, poor Bill. <laughs> poor Bill. <laughs> poor old Bill. I, I think Bill has an opinion on that. <laughs> yeah, I think he might. Yeah, Bill's like, I'm not quite dead yet. <laughs> So one of the priests should check the scroll and see what you've got. I'd be happy to if we need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want to hand that over and I'll take uh, a look? Absolutely. Magnus, hand this to you. Beautiful. So I, you said it is in a scroll tube, right? I want to inspect yeah. the case pretty closely. Is there any kind of religious iconography <laughs> scrolled across it? Anything of that nature? Is it pretty bland? It's plain, yeah, but that's a good idea. You keep doing that. Absolutely. So... <clears throat> Uh, are, are we looking at like kind of a pop lid or a twist cap at the end? Or? Twist cap, yeah. Okay. Uh, very slowly, pointed away from me, I am going to see if it spins. You're not going to do like the lightsaber, the lightsaber thing right in the eye? No, no, not today. Right. <laughs> I'd prefer this not to be my grave as well. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, very so you do that, nothing. Methodically. No, All right. There's no like jack in, the, jack in the tube. Perfect. that. Yeah. All right. Uh, still faced away from me. I am going to shake it just a little bit at a tilt. So if it was filled with liquid or anything, it's not going to pour into my hand. And we're all good there. Uh, parchment falls out. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll pick that on up and give it an unravel. See what we can see. All right. So uh, you notice that there are some um, divine um, symbols on the scroll. You'll uh, need to cast read magic to attempt to decipher the arcane or um, divine symbols. I did not take such a thing. I was so. that, that sounds like a, a tavern uh, check. Yeah. I think this will go to the church and I kind of stuff it back in a coat pocket. <laughs> yeah, you do so. All right. So uh, you're now at the, at the port. Uh, Cullis, you've uh, taken a look at the bodies, which is a good idea there, Magnus. How would you like to proceed? Are we uh, going to do our 10-foot pole, cautiously move forward to the next intersection and take a look? Yeah, we're going to move forward to the next intersection, uh, opening to the north. Yeah. Okay. At least um, see what's going on. You uh, pull along the floor, and all seems well. You look to the north with your torch, which gives you about uh, 30 feet. So you can see that uh, hallway uh, extending to the north. And you can see uh, this hallway extending to the northwest. And then of course, the uh, portcullis to the south. Does there appear to be a way to open the other portcullis? Is there another lever? Yep. About 15 feet down, there's another lever. Well, even if I don't, I don't relish the thought of staying here overnight, but at least if we could raise and lower this lever, it would be a somewhat secure way, except for those, those proboscis bat creatures. But, uh, my vote's still going home, but, uh, do you, so do we want to go north, south, or uh, uh, west, north? Maybe scout out the options. Uh, I could go or uh, send the uh, the door. Uh, Greg, do do halflings have uh, dark vision? They do. Yeah, um, yeah. If you give me a second to adjust, um, I'll go. Uh, uh, I'll take the uh, the way to the uh, west north and. Uh, um, where the creepy spider is? Where the creepy towards the creepy spider? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good idea for anybody to be traveling down here by themselves. I think we should stick together. But what if there's loot? <laughs> <laughs> or death? I vote. 
I vote north. Go north? Yeah, let's go north. Let, let's get back in order then. Uh, go north. Uh, I appreciate uh, Magnus's uh, uh, caution, and uh, let's start poking our way north. That wasn't Magnus. Well, Magnus was all going oh. with you into the dark. <laughs> Wait, what? what? I'm going to leave that too. <laughs> I don't trust alcoves. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> uh, what's in the alcove there, Greg? Uh, I'll step in. <clears throat> okay. Um, you step in the alcove and just click stonework. Hmm. Uh, so you didn't say the stonework clicked, but... I'm going to uh, inspect the walls in the alcove to see if uh, I find any loose stones or rocks or levers or what's well as stone since there. It's a secret passage or compartment. Do you find Ooh. a secret door? There we go. Oh, a little bit of nice. Uh, hmm. I guess I'll uh, try to attempt to use the device to open the secret door. What device would that be? Uh, well, if I found a secret door, how do I know that there's a secret door there? Is it like a seam around the edge of it, or is there? A... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you said you went and you looked for a secret yeah. door, and indeed you found one. Hey guys, there looks like I think there's a seam to a door here, but I don't know how to get through it. Well, uh, I've been the chief fondler, so I will uh, <laughs> step on up. Yes, please fondle uh, this area of the wall for me. Uh, the most prestigious title. <laughs> I'll use my dagger around the seam. Master fondler. Master fondler. Uh, master fondler. The uh, uh, and I'll uh, go go along the seam, see if there's any loose bricks. Use my dagger around the edges. He's the stair master. He mastered the stairs. He mastered those stairs. Oh, he mastered the stairs. Okay. Um. Sorry, Dan. I was. Uh, what was that? Yeah. Yeah. So I use my blade. I go around the edges, <laughs> seeing if there's any sort of any entranceway, any keyholes, any uh, brickies that pull, push, or uh, or other words, otherwise move. You don't see any keyholes. You don't see any stones sticking out like you did on the last one. I'll start pushing them in. Um, okay. So you push on the door, and it does move back a little bit, but you're so small that you don't have mass to push the door open. <gasps> Fafner will help push. Oh, Fafner. Yeah, I'll, help push. Yeah, I'll, I'll step back and let them uh, find out where the uh, dart traps are. <laughs> okay. So you, um, with Fafner's uh, weight, the two of you uh, push the door open and um, there's a glow at the back of, of this, uh, this little area that opens up and um, there's something in front of it that's sort of backlit by that glow. It looks like a, a large um, seven foot uh, humanoid silhouette because there's this light coming from behind it. And oh um, it it moves forward and it tries to punch uh, Fafnir in the face. Jesus. Nice. I rolled an 11. Uh, what's your AC, Fafnir? Five. Oops. Five. So that's a 16. Okay, um, it comes forward with uh, this fist to try to punch you in the face, but you manage to like bring your shield up and deflect the blow and you don't take any damage. So we're gonna roll an initiative. And uh, this is Fafnir and uh, Brandywine against this uh, humanoid thing. You wanna oh. take it, Fafnir? Yeah, I got it. Got a five. Five, oh. Dust off, go again. One. Five again. All right. So uh, Brandywine and Fafnir, you can attack at the same time in this uh, space. Uh, <clears throat> I assume I don't have any room to, to uh, throw. Uh, no, you I... can't. You Once you're in melee, you can't use yeah. a uh, missile weapon once you're in melee combat. So you'd have to go to your, uh, or excuse me, you can't use a missile weapon in melee combat. You'd have to go to your melee weapon. Okay. So I'll I use bash my... it with my mace. Okay. Short sword for 19 to hit. You need a 13. I got a 19. No, yeah, that's a hit. That's a hit. Uh, three. 
Three points of damage. Noted. I bashed it with a 13 with my mace. That's a 14 with my strength. Yeah, it's a hit. D6 damage. Two. Okay. Plus one. Two points of damage. Three total? Yeah, three total. Okay. All right. So um, both of you, uh, you notice that your your weapons seem to hit into wood. There's a strange, like almost like a bounce to the to your weapons when they hit this um, this uh, looks like a wood construct, and it looks and like um, a human, uh, seven foot tall human made of wood. And it's it she in darkness. Now you want initiative, right? What is this blasphemy? Yeah. Yes, we did. Okay. All right. So, uh, so it'll attack uh, Fafnir again. Rolls a sixteen uh, plus your AC, and its hit dice is a hit. Um, so you get punched in the face for six points of damage. Ouch! Uh, it's a new initiative. Can um, I use my sling to shoot over Brandywine? Yep. Roll six. I do. I rolled a two, so you're up. The three of you can attack. Okay, so it's uh, Chadwick first. I think, if, if I'm, Are uh, we noticing that we're doing any damage to it when we hit it, or is it just bouncing off of it? Um, yes, you're doing damage. And uh, how many sling attacks do I get per round? One. Okay. All attacks are one per round. Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen. Um, that's a hit. Yeah. All right. And let the one be four. Plus your decks. So I get three points. Very good. So it's taken three wounds so far. Uh, I go to swipe at it again with a 16. That's a hit. Uh, D6 with my short sword. Oh, five. Okay. Um, that was uh, the last bit. So um, you, you uh, hack it. Between all of you, you sort of like hack it into bits, wood shards flying everywhere, and then the the, the creature basically falls falls backward at like a tree trunk. Mm. Is there anything else, any other creatures or anything behind him that we don't haven't noticed? What's the light coming from? Yeah, what's the object of light there? <laughs> all right. So similar to this area, there's a stone dais at the back. And there's a pedestal, and on top of the pedestal is a globe that's glowing red. I'm going to take a moment or, to... An orb search. about that big. Yeah, I'll take a minute to search our fallen enemy here. Yeah, it's, just, it's a wooden construct, so it doesn't have any treasure. Okay. Could we use this to <laughs> like prop open a portcullis or use it as like a wooden bridge? <laughs> I well, it's seven it. feet, so it wouldn't cross a ten-foot pit, but you it could wouldn't. probably wedge it under the portcullis if you wanted. If I use my iron spikes, if I can wedge them in to keep the portcullis up, maybe I can wedge them to keep them shut. One <laughs> thing's for certain, I am highly offended by this construct beast thing, so I'm going to take a piece of chalk, and I am going to draw the sigil of St. Ega upon it, because it needs to be cleansed at some point or another. This is an atrocity. Good work. You do so. So what's going on? Uh, who's fondling the red uh, orb of so Orbiness? Often I had a holding question. His holy Wasn't it a different colored light? See if he picks up anything. Yeah, I thought it was yellow. Then. Yeah, okay. I thought it was a different color, not red. It, um, it, uh, it shifts between red and orange, almost like it has a fire within it. That's some witch fire or something. Look closely at it. Do we see anything inside it? Um, you can you can see this kind of swirling, like it's sometimes um, orange, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's a little bit yellow, like a fire is within the orb. I only have one spell left, but would detect evil be a good use? Do you think, party? The whole thing might rate like everything might radiate evil. That's right. kind of what I'm, I'm thinking. Kind of, is, yeah, it's going to radiate kind of an evil. Aura. Yeah, it might be worth it. I mean, we're getting close to. My oh, only thing yeah, is we're seeing a lot of druidy back. symbols, so yeah. I don't I don't know. Evil, like the fruits of the devil. Fruits of the devil. Mm. I'll hold on to it for now. Yeah. So you, uh, Fafnir, did you grab the orb? 
I have not touched it yet. Okay. I should. Um, I'm holding my holy symbol and putting my hand around it. Do I feel anything or guidance or anything? You wanted to touch the orb? No, I just said <laughs> holding my holy symbol, <laughs> put my hand over it and sort of see if I can feel or detect any evil or anything from it. Um, no, you don't sense anything. Okay. Are there any uh, crescent moon symbols anywhere around here? Good idea. No, you don't see any crescent moon symbols. I'll reach out to the globe. <laughs> okay, um, you reach out and you can. It will. You can feel it will move. You can. You pick it up with your hand, and you're holding this globe. It feels warm to the touch. Hmm. He starts speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of getting an of glove? Does it change color when he holds it? Oh no. Well, I vote, since we have this orb and the medallion, I say we get the heck out of here. Well, what else is around the orb? Off. I mean, we're focusing on this orb. Is there anything else back there? Like, if I search around the walls, do I see any uh, hidden passages or compartments? You uh, take a look around uh, with your dim human eyes, but you don't see anything. And it was on a similar pedestal kind of thing as we've seen, right? Uh, it has an altar similar to the one over here, but this okay. one, instead of having the box, it had a pedestal, and the orb was sitting on a pedestal. pedestal. So I'm going to take some wood off this wood construct, four pieces, and then I use some of the rope, and I cut some of my rope off, and then I bound the orb to these four pieces and use like a, like a oh. torch. All right. I like that. <clears throat> Does it we, put off uh, enough light to illuminate five, ten feet out? Hmm. Yeah, five feet. And it's warm. As I said, it's warm to the touch. Mounted on a staff. <laughs> uh, so what's, what's the deal? Should we uh, investigate this more? Should we take off with it? Do you want to head back to town? Wrap it up? Might be a good time to. Before we leave, I want to also further desecrate this place in the name of my good God. And I would like to take more chalk and just the holy symbol on the wall or something like that. You know, this was a place of horrid evil. Very well. You uh, seek to cleanse this space. So I say we go we go all the way back up and then we uh, close this. If uh, if the, the sto stone will turn, we'll seal this back up. And then well, make our way back through the first pit. Before, and up the before we leave it, I'm going to check with my stone sense on the pedestal itself mm -hmm. to see if there's anything mm -hmm. unusual. Good dwarf. <laughs> All right. You uh, check the pedestal and you don't see anything unusual in the stonework. Okay. Well, I think we're good, guys. So are we heading back to loot extraction? Town? Mm -hmm. Town? We haven't, they, those uh, adventurers were ahead of us in our quest here. We haven't found them either. What do you want to do about the portcullis? Hmm. I say we lower it back down. Once yeah, we return it to how we found it. I can put my um, uh, like grappling hook on it, and then when we whip it through, and then pull it as we. As I we also down. think that we could try to seal up that secret door on the L there, so close yeah. this off, so no one mm. knows it. Just and whip it good, though. We'll discover it when we're gone. Could do that too. But it would be hard to do the thing with the lever, Dan, because yeah. it's up position, and then it's yeah. in the down position. So, Well, I figured if they find the secret already, uh, okay, they got the port callers open for them. So, It's hmm. fair. And by the way, if we come back and the port callers is down, then we know somebody's been here. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go back up the stairs. Uh, we'll close the secret door. Mm-hmm. Making sure to like look up and around, make sure there's nothing uh, waiting for us in general marching order. All right. So uh, you um, close the secret door and you uh, shimmy across the pit in the same manner that you did uh, the other two. And so uh, you've managed to all survive the, the first um, attempt into this unplundered crypt. And I was much rejoicing. Oh, we're running out of the taverns on me, fellas. Well, um, 
I did kind of nab that spell scroll off of someone. Do you want that back, or I'm more than willing to pay you for it, or do whatever? Uh, I don't really care. You can, no, no, it's, I it's would like to loop. check it out with the church. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I agree. A group that's whoever you can be most benefited by it. That's who you should probably do. Perfect. It. We will, um, and when we start up next week, we'll have assumed you have, over the course of that span, time will pass in real time, and you can uh, you can cast Read Magic on it back in town. Also, um, I guess we get healed back in town. We don't have to worry about spells or whatever to heal up right now. We'll be full health you, next time. Yeah, get you, some you, help. And... you can heal back up to uh, full with your spells and rest back in town. Okay, perfect. What All a right. fun game. What are we going to uh, do with this red orb that's glowing? <laughs> I don't want I to think that's thing. yours. That the yeah, you uh, have that in your Maybe hand. There's a... <laughs> Maybe there was a sage uh, and he was like, tell us more about Are you it. able to drop it to leave it behind? Can you like not? Oh, no, I think we should like, bring it and uh, yeah, like like uh, Fafner said, uh, find a mage. Maybe we can identify it. Uh, Greg, in yeah, Dragon exactly. Slayer, is there are carousing rules and uh, uh, downtime sort of measurement? Yeah, we can we can um, do that through the chat if you yeah. like, you know, and then so things you want to do in town between now and next week, we can do that. Oh, That's awesome. All right, so um, let's just take, before we wrap up, let's just take a quick minute to uh, debrief. Uh, any thoughts, feelings you want to share so far? Oh, one thing I forgot is my special ability to cleave in the first battle we came across. Oh, oh, oh I crazy. did too. Yeah. Yep, as I, I had two of those and I could have. Right, yeah. something like that. I wrote in big letters, I was like, do not forget <laughs> next time. Yep. Yeah, that's a big, that's a, um, oh, uh, a real big advantage uh, if you if you send in uh, if you soften your targets, then you send in your fighters with the cleave ability. That's when everyone can really play to their role, and you can take best combat advantage of your fighters. Yep, we goofed on that one. Yeah, it happens, um, but we're all uh, getting used to it. And um, so uh, I really do appreciate everyone taking the time tonight. I hope you had fun and. Um, and we'll pick it up one week from tonight at, at uh, we'll do maybe uh, 6.45 and we'll start at 7. How's that sound? That's great. Cheers. Good. Good. Love All it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Really appreciate it. To Dragon Slayer. Thank you. Slayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you for the game.